Welcome to the Marie Manucherry podcast. Over the last 30 years, it has been my joy to assist humanity in aligning with their magnificence so they may heal, discover their natural gifts, and communicate with loved ones living on the other side. May you also experience delight while we dance in the powerful, intuitive world of energy. Let's get going. Welcome to my podcast if you've never been here before and welcome back if you've been here before and I'm so grateful you're enjoying it. Intuition is a normal part of your birthright. It's a natural thing to experience. And I think why it can be confusing for a lot of people is because they're listening to their mind and your mind has nothing to do with your intuition. Even though the third eye exists here, the sixth chakra, it's literally in your brain and it's where information is translated. So intuition actually originates outside of your body in what's called the emotional response system, your authentic emotions, not mind made emotions, which are very different. Mind made emotions are dramatic and quick, annoying, frustrating, anxiety causing, even depression. Most depression is mind made. It's not authentic. So your real feelings are always calm. Even true anger and true grief have an observational quality to them that are very calm and surprisingly comforting, honestly, and very eye-opening and awakening. There, it's, it's a sacred experience to be within your authentic emotions. And that's not what it's like when you're experiencing mind-made emotions. It doesn't feel sacred at all. So a lot of people get confused when they're translating intuition because they're using their brain to analyze something that has nothing to do with logic. Intuition is free flowing. It comes from your higher self, your connection to source energy, your God self, uh, archangels, you know, everything to do with the multisensory world. And of course, the multisensory world exists within our human realm, but not from thinking about it, but from experiencing it, especially being in the present moment, which is critical and important and highly, highly necessary in order to live a fulfilled life here. And you can have moments of the present. You don't have to make the whole day present. That would be ideal and amazing for the human race, but moments of the present would be phenomenal. So the next time you're trying to decipher something intuitive, get out of your head. It's not going to be logical. It's going to be calm. It's going to be kind and a little bit surprising. So for example, if I were to think of the color purple, I literally have two experiences about it. My logical mind thinks that purple is not a cool color. It doesn't like it. It thinks that it's too woo woo. Um, but my intuitive, calm, lower part of my body thinks that purple is magical. It was also the first time that I knew that there were chakras in the body. I knew one of them was purple. I don't own a purple shirt at the moment because my mind, you know, doesn't think it's a cool color, but I'm in my office with my lavender cup. I have, um, the Kleenex box next to me is purple. <laughs> And so is a beautiful fluorite Buddha um, behind me is also purple. So get used to having an awareness that there's two different ways to identify your intuition, that you're going to have two different kinds of responses. And when you're having the mental response, which will be quick, loud, usually not positive, not supportive, that's not intuitive search for the other one, rest in the lower half of your body. And when you're deciphering intuition, let's say you've woken up from a really cool dream and you want to know what it means. Your brain will not know. Your brain is logical. Dreams are magical. So get out of your head, rest in the lower half of your body, perhaps do some automatic writing. If you don't know what that is, you can look it up. I believe that many people have them on their YouTube channels. I certainly do have information about it so that you can find that stream of consciousness that is actually a thousand times more accurate than the logical mind and learning to understand your intuition and to use it is fun. It's extremely rewarding and you have to practice it. You have to practice. Was that my brain? Or is that my intuition? You have to practice. Um, practice makes everything perfect. <laughs> so why don't we go ahead and go to our voicemails. For some of you who are new, I hosted a radio show for 
I think close to 15 years, people would call in live and ask questions and I would answer them. So on this podcast platform, people leave a voicemail. They go to my website, energyintuitive.com, and they leave a message and they actually get a free self-hypnosis, which is kind of cool. And so now I'm going to go and listen to these beautiful um, questions and answer them based on my intuition not my logical mind. When clients make an appointment to see me, my assistants have been have been asked to not share any information with me because I like to go in cold. If I know ahead of time what's going on with someone or their main concern, it actually kind of paralyzes my intuition. I'll go to my logical mind and, and start thinking, analyzing, and processing. So I like to go in cold, not knowing anything, kind of figure out a few things while I'm reading their energy and, um, and then go from there. So when people reach out for an intuitive, whether that's for, in my case, for a, a mediumship experience or a health related situation, they've probably already tried to figure this out on their own or they've visited doctors, or they try to communicate with the loved ones. So they're not coming to me usually unexperienced. They've already sought out some help. help. So they don't need my logical perception, they need my intuition. And when we get into that intuitive place, that calm, relaxed, it's really joyful actually, then we have a completely different experience. And when I'm reading someone's energy, even when I'm listening to these calls, I'm hearing, something for the first time, by the way, <laughs> I'm hearing something and I can tell by the sound of their voice, what they are thinking mentally. So they're in their brain having thoughts and ideas and perceptions, which are not intuitive 99% of the time. And so I'm actually diving into their emotional body and finding out what they're really feeling because that's where I can help them is through their authentic emotions, not from their mind to made emotions. And that's where I can give them new ideas and new inspirations. And I love homework. I believe people heal themselves and I believe everybody's creating their own reality all the time, whether they're recognizing it or, or not. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start listening. Hi, Marie. My name's Kim from Brisbane, Australia. Um, I am asking for my son who has been diagnosed with infantile hypercalcemia. Um, he was very sick and before that, but they found out what it is through um, genetic testing. It's really very rare, um, I've been told. So they've got him on these pills that are just really um, just about investigation and trial and error. So if we can help him in a spiritual way to heal, help heal himself and the condition he has, which doctors don't really know about, that would be awesome. Thank you so very much. Love your work. Bye. Uh, thank you, Kim. Love all of you, actually, and all the work you guys do in the world as well. Well, first of all, I'm so happy your son got a diagnosis and that we have medication for him to allow him to be well and to continue to thrive in the world. Um, that's wonderful. What some people tend to forget is that creation made everything. Physicians, pharmaceutical, pharmacology, surgical suites, all of that was created by creation as well, not just spiritual healing. But when I look at your son, he's a very old soul, by the way. He's not really good at receiving. So that's one of the reasons why he's having issues with elements, with absorbing important aspects is he's not in this receptive aspect and you're not a good receiver either. A lot of people aren't, especially old souls who are not good at receiving. They're great at giving. They love to give. It's fun for them, but it's also exhausting if we don't learn to receive as much as we give, like it's critical. One of the main reasons why old souls reincarnate to the human world, to earth, is to learn you know, self-appreciation, self-love, self-compassion. They don't need to work on compassion for others. Got that down packed. So I'm telling you this because when parents, if they have a similar energy issue, which is typical, if they change their energy, that helps their child to change their energy. So if you could practice and you could do this together, if you could practice receptivity, 
which means that you believe you're worthy and deserving of all the subatomic subatomical particles you could possibly imagine to come into your body, um, then you're going to be by osmosis teaching your child the very same thing. So your child needs to learn to absorb energy. Everything's out of, out of energy and subatomic particles are floating everywhere and in our body. So I like to imagine when I'm in that practice that the pores of my skin throughout my entire body are open and I'm taking in light. You can actually think about particles. It can be warmth. Anything that is soothing for you, warmth is great. It's a little chilly this morning in the Northwest. <laughs> so just close your eyes, maybe do it twice a day. It could take you up to five minutes to get into the zone and then to open up all the pores in your body and start taking in subatomic particles. That would be incredible and amazing for you. But remember that part of spiritual healing can be modern medicine. It doesn't mean it has to always be modern medicine. There are many times that we can then go into um, a different aspect where our body has shifted its subatomic particles and we don't need as much modern medicine or maybe we don't need modern medicine. And I use the term modern because traditional medicine is really old school herbs, vitamins, you know, the more first nations aspect of healing where it comes from the earth. Pharmacology comes from the earth too, but they take it into the lab and recreate it, they synthesize it. And so it has a lot of proteins and it's harder to break down. The reason why you are feeling a little concerned because they don't know what he's going to need in terms of how much of the medication is going to need. That's not unusual, especially when we're looking at you know, younger people who are in development aspects, we don't exactly know. So that's not unusual. Even when it comes to certain types of seizure medications, especially for children, they don't know exactly how much they're going to need or which seizure drugs are going to work right away. It's not uncommon. So there's nothing wrong with the fact that they don't know exactly the dosage yet. Um, they will, they'll figure it out, which will be amazing. And then as your, you and your child become more receptive, then that dosage could reduce or completely go away. But taking medicine is, is, can, and many times be part of spiritual healing, at least in this instance, I once heard, uh, I was on the radio and a woman called in. And I believe she was a naturopathic physician and she had a young child and her young child wasn't breastfeeding well. And it wasn't mechanical in terms of um, her breast or her nipple. So there wasn't anything wrong there, but the child just wasn't feeding. And she was, um, of course, concerned because he was dropping some weight and he was quite young, but she didn't want to give him formula. And I explained to her that that's exactly what he needs. He likes the formula better. It doesn't matter why there can be complexities to why souls have certain experiences. Remember all souls have had many, 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 many lifetimes. And the older your soul is, the more lifetimes one have, one has had and all kinds of weird stuff has happened in previous lifetimes. Think about the earth in the 13th century. Yikes, weird stuff that souls are working out. And so our job is not to judge how a soul recovers from something or how they move forward. Our job is to just celebrate it. When all of my daughters, because at one time they were all pregnant, by the way, during the pandemic, kind of weird. <laughs> like nobody could go in with them for their doctor's appointments. We didn't even know if their husbands could be with them during their deliveries, which they all were, which was lovely. Nobody could visit them after the deliveries in the hospital. It's very weird time and just scary, you know, to be pregnant during the pandemic. And some of my daughters were pregnant for the first time. Some were, you know, second time. And I've always told my kids uh, that I don't care how the baby comes into the world. We just want a healthy mommy and baby. Um, and, and I was really pounding that into their head because I don't really care how it happens. But we want everyone to be healthy. Everyone needs to be healthy when they come into the world. So I'm hoping that my thoughts, my intuitive experiences about this are helpful. And I'm so happy that everyone figured out what was going on and that your son's getting exactly what he needs. That's a success. That's delicious. Celebrate that.
please, while you also learn to receive. Thank you so much. Hi, Marie. I'm so excited I discovered you today. I really enjoy your approach to guidance and I'm so thankful for you sharing your talents with us, your gifts with us. This is the three year anniversary of my grandmother, Emily, passing. That's on my, my mom's mom. And then my uncle, my dad's brother, Dwayne, he also passed on the very same day. And it was hard to grieve two people at the same time. But at the same time, there was a comfort or a beauty to knowing they both left at the same time. They weren't super close, but they knew each other for many years and we spent holidays together. And I don't know if you have any insight as to whether that may have been somewhat of a planned thing. Uh, my grandmother went first and she's such a loving person. I almost envision her being there as my uncle passed. Um, I'd love to hear any insight you may have in regards to their passing at the same t same day. And two, if they have anything they'd like to um, say to the family, if there's any um, anything important for us to hear or know. Another thing is whenever I think of a loved one that's passed, um, often I will either speak aloud, I love you, I miss okay. you, or thank you and give my gratitude for my time with them. Sometimes I'll say it just to myself, like in my head, and sometimes I'll actually speak it out loud. Do they hear that, um, loved ones that have passed? And is it anytime we say it? Is it sometimes? Um, does it matter whether it's spoken out loud or not? Uh, I'd love to hear what you have to say. And thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Jennifer. Weird that they passed on the same day. I think they were both from the same soul pod, meaning that their souls were the same kind of age. And they, and, the, and when you cross over, you return to your soul pod at some point. We usually go to the heavens, which is the fifth dimension for our earth. Eventually experience a life review, which is critical after living, especially a lifetime in a physical reality, where you get to see how you affected others from the moment you were born until you left your body. Um, your grandmother does have an incredible loving spirit. She's also a very strong, powerful creature, very powerful. And, and so you may think, well, no, they, they were so different, uh, your uncle and your grandmother, but they were both powerful, strong people. And, and that's the aspect they truly, truly shared. Um, yeah, she, she, she could hear that he was coming when she was leaving her body. Because when you leave your body, you get so much knowledge. It's like everything that you forgot before you reincarnated just comes into your awareness and your consciousness. It's kind of shocking, overwhelming, and really cool. It's like becoming um, a powerful, highly conscious therapist. <laughs> you know, it's like really amazing. And so she was leaving her body and she heard that he was passing. She could actually hear his soul, which is interesting. And um, obviously, you know, probably hours before he left. So she waited in the astral plane for him and she, uh, flew down to where he was and was kind of off to the side so that his, his family could be close to him. And, and then she, uh, you know, held hands with everyone as they crossed over to the other side, his, his family and her and him. And he was really happy to see her because he, you, you remember people that you spent time with on earth so quickly when you uh, are leaving your body, I mean, you, you have those memories still really attached to you before you have full access or gain total knowledge of your long, long, long memories that we leave before we incarnate to the physical realm. I don't know if there is a reason why they both left at the same time. I think it was more of a coincidence. Uh, every, everybody leaves at a time that was chosen for them, whether that was a time they chose prior to reincarnation or a time they chose while they were in the physical form. So souls are choosing their exit routes. I, I don't think that they had a conversation, you know, energetically prior to incarnation or prior to leaving their bodies saying, Hey, you want to go at the same time? I don't think that happened, but it was a happy coincidence. It was a happy coincidence. They both mentioned when you asked the question, do they have any messages? They loved their family. So they love you guys. 
good, good family. People really care about each other. They're really there for each other. You have an honest family, which is rare, by the way, because a lot of people have issues in their families because that's where a lot of people have a reemergence of what they need to work on through their fam family dynamics. So a lot of families are a little cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Um, but your family and a lot of your family is, is kind and honest and gracious, kind of reminds me of Midwestern people if I was going to stereotype a type of energy. Um, that's how I feel about my daughters and myself and son-in-laws. We have a lovely connection and their families. You know, we have really lovely connections with each other. And we get along well and we enjoy each other's company authentically. It's really fun. It's very, very fun. Um, and then regarding a personal message, they just love you very, very much. And yes, they can hear it every single time. But I loved your question because most people overthink, analyze, and process in their mind, which is not intuitive, right? We clarified that at the beginning of the podcast. And so speaking out loud is actually, you know, more requested from the other side. So they aren't confused with all the things p humans have going on in their brain. So speaking out loud is beautiful. They love um, your gratitude. They love the love that you send them and they send you love a thousand times over every single time. All right. That was fun. Thank you, Jennifer. Good morning, Marie. My name is Janice Arone and I do have a question. I have worked with several healers in my lifetime, one being Master John Douglas, who you may be aware of. And I am asking the question about when a healing procedure has been done by these various healers, I perceive that the healing actually has taken place to a greater degree or lesser degree, but I'm finding that the healing of my back, um, which doesn't allow me to stand up straight or walk very far distances, does not last very long. And I'm so confused by that issue. I, I see that there is a healing that has taken place, but then it reverts to the original um, lesser amount of movement within my body, period. So that's just on the physical level. I've got another question on a psychological level, but I will save that for another time. Anyway, this is my question, and thank you so much for your amazing podcast with Alex, which I completely was absorbed in and completely felt so drawn, so very drawn to you, which is unusual for me to have that um, amount of, of affinity and connection. So I'm very grateful for that. And I look forward to your future work and I will absolutely be following you. Thank you so much. Love Janice. Thank you, Janice. I'm very sorry for the continued back pain. I just have a million things I could say about your question. And thank you for asking one question. I really appreciate it. I'd like to get through as many people as possible. And we have a lot of voicemails, which I'm grateful and thrilled about. It makes me very happy that I chose this new platform because we have enough questions, which is really lovely. I'm one of those healers that talks during sessions almost the entire time because I really feel like we're healing two things. We're healing energy, which I love to do. I love to move subatomic particles. It makes me very happy. brings me great joy. I believe in the last podcast I toned, um, which I could not do on the radio or I chose not to because radio sounds are weird. You know, it sounds weird anyway. Um, it's not as clear as, as this platform. So I chose not to tone, but I also talk because I have to talk to the person's brain and help them understand certain aspects because people truly heal themselves. So sometimes when you're visiting a healer, they're doing the energetic work, which is really important, but you're right. Sometimes people don't hold on to it or really integrate it into their system because they're not involved in the experience. And when I'm talking to people, I'm involving them. 
I'm asking them questions. I'm telling them what I think. So I'm going to tell you what I think, what I feel. The spine, which is an incredible and critical part of the body. I mean, think about it. It's where a lot of your neurological aspects are. It's huge. It's beautiful. has the spinal cord, tons of nerves, vertebrae. It's like, wow. It embodies a lot of chakras. So the back portion of chakras two, four, five, and six, yes, are all in the spine. One, chakra one, even though it's not in the spine, it's in the pelvic floor and extends out through the thigh, it connects to the colon and the coccyx, which is kind of floating a little bit in your body. And then the seventh vortex, even though it doesn't connect to your vertebrae energetically, the seventh chakra governs all your neurological systems. So you've got all your chakras involved in your spine. That can be one of the reasons why it's trickier to, to allow it to heal. So energetically speaking, everyone's will is in their spine. And what we're supposed to do is, is align with the will of the divine. That means get out of the way, surrender. You're not good at surrendering. It's not your favorite thing. And surrendering makes you do stuff you wouldn't normally do. It, it makes you kind of think outside of the box. It makes you have, it makes you more vulnerable, which some people think is unsafe. I think it's the true essence of power to be vulnerable. Is it challenging? Of course. Yes, it's challenging. Yeah, it's challenging to be vulnerable. So what I would highly recommend that you start doing right away is to start repeating silently. What if I let go and get out of the way? Because you hold on to so many things and you're holding on to this disease process. You won't let go. You won't surrender. You won't get out of the way. So it can't heal. I'll do some toning for everyone. Uh, later on, but I'll focus on spinal energy because we could all use spinal energy. That's one of the reasons why I take Pilates so I can have a nice, strong spine and, you know, beautiful muscles as much as I possibly can. So you have to get out of the way. Getting out of the way means stop thinking, analyzing, and processing about the situation, even though I know it's not comfortable. You can't, you don't have the mobility that you want when you have these healings. They're not lasting. That's because you have a very strong will and it's taken over your experience and you're not letting go and aligning to the divine. Letting go means to truly, truly surrender, to really get out of the way. I'm going to use an example because I have a bunch of them, but uh, sometimes it's highly personal. <laughs> so I don't always like to share that. I think I've shared this before. When each one of my babies was born, uh, I said to them, each one of them, and I didn't know that I was intuitive at the time. I started having kids pretty early. I got married at 20 that I told each of them with my mind, because we communicate multi, you know, through the, oh, what's the word I want to use? Mental telepathically is, is truly the goal. It's beautiful to speak out loud, especially if you don't quiet your mind, but I like to communicate as much as I can mental telepathically. And after you give birth, you're kind of in this really interesting, I mean, you're exhausted, you're worn out, you know, you're recovering from all kinds of weird things. And, but it's very, it's very high energy. It's, it's really cool. At least those were all my experiences. Even the third one where I was really wiped out, you know, after having two kids and now a baby. Um, but I told each of them how much I loved them, how grateful I was that they had decided to come to earth and that I also humbly respect their choices to stay here as long as they want. Of course, I hoped that they would stay here longer than me, but I humbly appreciated whatever they needed to do for their soul. That is a form of surrender. Now, a lot of people think that surrendering is giving up or that when you're surrendering, you're agreeing to something you don't want. I think it's just about honoring others. So I want you to honor your spine because you're mad at it too. And you're disappointed and you're sending negative energy to it. And you're too controlling when people have control issues, which means they don't know how to get out of the way. It's not good for their joints, their bones, um, which then isn't good for ligaments and tendons and vertebrae and the nuclei and everything else, right? It it's just has a rippling effect. So I want you to start thanking your spine. I want you to start loving it exactly the way it is. And I want you to notice how I'm just telling you everything to do. You could do whatever you want, of course. 
And then if you could stop thinking, analyzing, and processing about this spine and let go so that you can start to align to the will of the divine. And you may need to repeat a hundred times a day. What if I surrender and get out of the way? And I don't want you to analyze what that means. Don't process that what if question. Don't process any what if questions. That's for everybody who's listening. You're just meant to repeat them in your brain so you can have a different chemical reaction. So those chemicals can move through the blood brain barrier and start to calibrate your body in a different way. Appreciate where you are and what's happening right now, even though you don't want it. That's key. That's how you let go. All right. Thank you. Hi, Marie. Thanks for all that you do. And thanks for choosing my message. I wanted to see how many guides I have, if I have any archways, and if my guides have any messages for me. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Hi, Amy. Yes, of course you have guides. I haven't met a person who doesn't have spirit guides. That's Charles, by the way. <laughs> He's not an early riser, and I woke up pretty early to make this podcast. Had a little problem with the podcast I recorded last night. He was kind of sleepy, and the chair he's in is not big enough. I can't fit it through the door, the one I want. I might have to open up the window. Okay, you have a lot of guides. You have your original guide group is 13, but you have extra right now, which means that when you originally incarnated to Earth, you had ideas of what you wanted to experience and accomplish, and now you're changing. You're having different experiences, so you need other guides to help you during this time period because you're Current guide group wasn't prepared for it. They're busy enough. They've got plenty to do. So right now you have 20 guides. So seven additional, which seven is the highest spiritual number there is on earth. So it's a very high vibrational frequency. You're probably moving more into spirituality, which is very exciting. I'm excited for you. You have about eight archways open, which is a lot of archways. I'll explain what that means for people who don't know. And there are two other additional archways behind the eight, but they're not quite open. So archways, and these are things that I've seen for years. I talk about them in um, how to communicate with your spirit guides, which I believe is only available on Audible now. Um, I don't know who has a CD player. I don't anymore. Not in my house, not my car. They don't exist. But I, I think all the CDs are sold. We might have a few left. I think we have a handful left. Sounds true, who's my publisher, might have a handful left, but they gave me a warning a few months ago. We're almost out of this item. But it's on Audible. It's available on Audible, how to communicate with your spare guides. Archways occur when someone has an increase of consciousness. And it doesn't have to be spiritual consciousness. It could be that someone moved from uh, China to the U.S. And they have a completely different experience. Or someone moved from the United States to... Um, I don't know, Iceland, right? And they're having a completely different experience. So their consciousness is changing. The way they experience the world is changing. They're having a, a different awareness. So it can be spiritual. It can be just related to the world. Um, something as simple as creating a partnership or creating a family, however you create that can create archways because there's a shift in consciousness. So you think differently. You're having different awarenesses. So a lot is happening because you have really 10 archways. The, what archways look like to me, that's how I've always described them, is they're like 50 feet high, 20 feet wide. They look like half of the McDonald's golden arch, but more illuminating, more glowing, kind of like a halo. <laughs> and they're behind people. And they start maybe four to five feet behind someone, and then they're another 10 or so feet space in between each other. What's really unique about the archways is the arch opens eventually. So it comes, it, it comes with the arch visible, but the energy in between these two pillars of the arch is closed. Like it's not an open door. And at some point, I don't know what the magical ingredient is. It doesn't take very long. Once the arch way appears, it could open immediately or within a couple years, the energy opens and it opens to a different dimension, not Earth's dimension, another dimension, and it starts to send light to you from this other dimension. There's billions of dimensions, something that you need, something that's going to be reinforcing you and helping you. This is true for anyone who has an archway, by the way. And also within the arch are 50 additional guides. So you get a lot of support. So something's changing and happening in your life, Amy, that's requiring all this extra help from the universe and the universe loves to help. It's one of its favorite things to do. It's a highly compassionate, you know, energy system. 
so I would continue to be surprised. I would continue to be excited. I would continue to be in joy and follow the high vibration of your joy because there's a lot to unfold there. That's really exciting. I believe I communicate directly from people's guides. But when people ask me that question, which sometimes does annoy me, what are my guides? Trying? I'm like, I'm telling you everything your guides. But that annoyance is just my mind. It's not an intuitive feeling. And then I drop into my intuition just giving everyone an example here, the difference between the mind and intuition. And then I feel like, ah, oh, this freedom, this relaxation. And it allows me to kind of laser into your guide group to find a different message. So that's what I've done right now. I love your guides. They're very high vibrational, very spiritual creatures. And guides always emanate the true essence of who we are. Like one of my primary guides who was wearing a burlap sack when I met him, he still wears one. And I'm like, why are you wearing that? You know, kind of like a Jesuit priest back in the day. And he, he said to me, you're a lot more spiritual than you realize, my dear. That's what he said to me. I love the old English kind of spiritual text. So I read a lot of books on from that. I've never read the Bible, but I've read a lot of old spiritual texts. At any rate, your guide's glow. They have a very high vibration and frequency. So I'm going to go back to my laser as I distracted myself a little bit. And um, they said, spirituality is your jam. It's important to you. It could be a big part of your future if you allow it to be. So that's what your guides are saying. But we've basically been saying that in every way possible um, during this conversation. Okay. Thank you so much. On to the next person. Hi, Marie. This is Susan from Tennessee. I would like to know how many spirit guides I have and um, are they trying specific ways to get my attention? Um, and if so, what are the specific ways they are trying to get my attention? And then secondly, I'm on a, I, oh, I feel like I'm on a verge of a, a big, huge life change. That's the only way I can describe it. Um, I'm not sure if just my mind is telling me that it's maybe just because I'm on a point in my life where it's like a big midlife crisis or situation, or is it uh, for real that I feel like something is on the horizon and that it's going to be a huge change? I would like to know if it's going to be positive or negative. I know everything happens the way it should. Um, I'm just wondering if I should get myself ready for it. And um, we'd just like to get your opinion on that. Thank you. You're welcome. Another question about spirit guides. And again, that CD set, I think there's six CDs in it, how to communicate with your spirit guides and talk all about it and, and give people meditation so they can connect. Everyone's spirit guides are helping them all the time. Most people don't listen to the advice that their spirit guides give them. They ignore it. It's very intuitive. It doesn't make logical sense. So I've always described it this way that, you know, the human being is trying to make a decision and they're, you know, asking their spirit guides for help and their spirit guides are offering them help. But most human beings ignore it and go the other direction. So let's say the spirit guides are saying, go left, go left. And the human is trying to make a decision. You know, am I going to go left or am I going to go right? And then the human being goes, I'm going to go right. And the spirit guides don't get upset. They're not emotionally connected uh, like human beings are in terms of disappointment and things like that. They don't even think about that. They just go, oh, everybody, we're going right. We're going right. And they follow the human and continue to support them and give them insight and awareness and consciousness, regardless of the path they choose, because we can learn in any moment. I love this feeling that you're having that something cool is about to occur. I know you get into your brain and you think maybe it could be something bad. Probably not. I don't see that. I don't think that, but humans tend to think that most things are bad. So you might have a different perception about it. What I would do, because I've been in those positions, I, I, I crave those moments in life when I can feel something co-creatively is happening. It's coming in alignment. Those are precious moments. And when I feel those moments, I put a lot of energy into it. I want my humanness to support this experience so I can let it in and positively affect me. So I will go on more walks with Charles, who's been you know <laughs> visible in our, in our podcast today. Um, and I will say prayers and I will listen to positive affirmations. I will use a ton of what if questions. 
I, I love to do prayers. Again, I like the old school spiritualists. So I love Edgar Casey, John Rondolph Price. I love, oh, I can't remember her name right now. Um, but she wrote the Emmanuel and Friends series. Rodegard, I believe was her last name. Maybe Patricia Rodegard. Oh, amazing. I love all of those books. So I tend to make prayers that are like that, or I've learned them over the years. Um, and they have a lot to do with gratitude. When you pray, you want to have gratitude. So let's say that you have something, I believe it's Susan, that you really want to manifest and you're feeling this high vibrational energy, which I think is a positive reinforcement of that. So maybe you take a few things, two to three things that you're really working on and you start to use positive phrases about it. Like, Hmm, what if, what if I am incredibly financially free? What if I easily feel loved, ad adored and cherished? I'm just picking some topics. What if I have work in the world that fulfills me beyond anything I could experience. I would start repeating those when you're on a walk. I would create prayers for it. I would heighten the vibration as much as possible while you're in this space of, of you are having an awareness that something cool is coming down the pike good for you and let your humanness be a part of it. It's critical. I would even think about your life exactly the way you would want it to be. And then I would get a singing bowl or tone or use some tuning forks and bring some vibration to it. Humans need to be active participants in the co-creation of their life. They are, but usually unconsciously. And then we're afraid to celebrate or to welcome in positive things. And that's a shame. That's one of the reasons why we incarnated to this physical realm. So we could learn to be positive supporters of what we want in life, to be manifestors consciously. So I'm excited for you. I hope that answered your question and good luck. <laughs> okay. Hi, Marie. This is Kristen from Texas. I'm calling with a question for you today. Um, I've had two pregnancy losses this year. Um, and I'd love to see if I could get some clarity or guidance on how to line up my energy to have a healthy, viable pregnancy. Um, I'd love to hear from my guides, my inner being, um, if I'm meant to have another baby, should I keep pursuing this? Um, any kind of guidance that you could give me on this would be amazing. Um, it's been a really tough, uh, really sad <laughs> experience for me going through this. I'd love to be able to have my baby be born in the next year. So, um, any kind of help or guidance you could give me with this would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Okay, Kristen, I'm sorry that you um, had these, you know, fetal losses. I'm very, very sorry. I'm, I know it's hard. I, I haven't had personal experience, but I've been close to people who have, so I know how challenging that is. You already have a child, at least one, which is great. At least that's what I believe. It's exciting. It doesn't mean you can't have more but you are in a form of desperation and you're trying to control this and make this happen. I think you should take six months off and not try for a while. So even get rid of this idea that you have a baby this year because your soul actually wants you to birth something else besides a child. You can have children though, have as many as you want. That's perfectly fine. But your soul wants you to birth something. That's why you feel this urge to birth. It wants you to birth something that's just for you. And kids are just for us in a way, sort of for a little while, especially if, if you happen to be a person who can breastfeed and you want to breastfeed, there's a lot of closeness and uniqueness and specialness that occurs, you know, when we have children, but the universe wants you to create something that's not about kids because they also, you know, have issues and problems and grow up and move away. You know? The earth the universe wants you to create something that's just for you. That's not about family. It's, it's something that will be yours forever. So I would get very curious about other things that you're interested in, other things that you've loved to co-create. I would love it if you figure out what makes you really happy besides family, which is important. And I'm, I'm thrilled that you love family, but I feel this other thing you're trying to birth and you're obviously, you know, cause you're stubborn you're obviously going to, Go ahead and birth a child eventually, which is lovely. That's great. 
But if you can put some energy towards what uh, what you really do want to birth, that's going to make the human birth more successful. And that means you need to relax. Stop pushing this so much. Stop being in desperation about it because that desperation pushes things away. Detach from the human aspect of giving birth and kind of merge into the spiritual aspect of giving birth. I often tell my kids, well, not often because it's not super nice, but I've told them I love my work almost as much as I love them. That's how I feel about it. And I love my kids a ton. I mean, they changed my life. They transformed me or our relationship transformed me, helped, helped me in so many ways. And uh, I love my work almost as much as I love them. Like it's so close, so close. And so that shows you how important it is to have something that's just in your life for you, that fills you up, that's not about um, something you physically birthed in, but something that you spiritually birthed in. And so in order to allow yourself to identify that, you have to get curious, you have to relax, you have to stop being desperate, and you have to only think of yourself and what personally feels good to you, not what your mind tells you, but what your emotional body tells you and start following those breadcrumbs so you can birth oh, something incredible into your life and another child if you truly desire one. Okay, thank you. Hi, Marie. I came across you recently and I'm really enjoying everything that you have to share. My question is, how do you fall in love with planet Earth so deeply? I can see that you've done that and I'm in the process of it. And some days I still kind of uh, feel a bit annoyed, I guess you could say, about being here in this physical form on this very dense reality planet. And I've created an incredible life for myself here. Mm. I, I have an incredible family. I have a business that I love running and that is pretty passive and allows me to earn lots of wealth. At the same time, I get to do pretty much the things that bring me joy most of the time of most days. So I have it very good. And I am, for the most part, a very joyful person and happy. And uh, But yeah, I just uh, sometimes struggle a little bit with the choice I made to come here because <laughs> it's pretty heavy. Anyway, I wondered if you had any insights to share. And I just wanted to say thank you again. Bye. I just loved hearing everything. I love what you've created so far. Um, Jana, Jana, <laughs> I just love it. I'm so happy for you. Congratulations. What I heard when you were talking is you just need to fall in love with yourself, really. And, and, and you love so many things and you know what love feels like, you know what joy feels like, but you need to have that feeling towards yourself. And then you're going to change your experience on this reality, you know, in this time space reality. Um, the more I fall in love with myself, the more I think earth is beautiful and all of its complexities and uniqueness. And, and, and it's, it, the earth was created to be exactly what it is. It, it's, it's kind of like creation, God source, whatever you want to call it. Goddesses said, okay, all these souls are evolving, doing their best to evolve and move past their limited belief processes so that they can have different experiences. And we never end the evolutionary process. It's, it's just a continuum always. And it's, it's challenging in a way to work on an issue when you're living in a non-physical reality, which there are many more than physical realities like earth, because you don't need to eat. You don't need wealth. You don't need structure. You don't need family. You don't feel lonely. You have huge awareness and you could just play all day, which is amazing. Just like what you're doing on the human world, you're playing, but it doesn't, there isn't a lot of enticement like, oh, I miss touch. So I, I need to work on my issues about relationships so I can have people in my life. Or, ooh, I really want to fly first class somewhere in the world. So you work on your issues regarding wealth, or you'd love to work less in the world. Um, so you work on your issues regarding wealth, which is really about receptivity, learning to be receptive. Everything's Everything truly has probably similar uh, issues. They just may play out differently for different human beings when a soul comes to earth. So if you could start to look at earth as this incredible playground where souls have contrast that's obvious to them, that propels them to work on their issues that are not even from this lifetime, they're from previous lifetimes. 
that could be one of the ways. But I, I kept seeing when you were talking how you just need to get quiet with earth, like sit down on the morning dew and really watch the buds of water on the grass and really get present. In my neighborhood, there are, you know, those standing ponds, you know, after they move into land, they have to create these water source containers. And right about now, cause it's getting close to spring, the, the frogs are so loud. I mean, I love it. It's one of my most favorite sounds in the world. And I, I can hear them behind my house, but there's wetlands behind me. So I can't walk into that area. I walk out of the house to walk Charles and I can hear the frogs. I know where they are. It's it. I have to walk through the neighborhood, which I will anyway, but I walk to this one standing pond. And as I get closer and closer to it, and they're so loud, it's almost deafening. It's amazing. I mean, how many frogs are in there? And we all know what they're doing. They're getting it on. They're having fun. I just get happier and happier and happier. Charles is like, what's happening? Why aren't we walking? <laughs> and then I just stand and it's a, it's gated, it's fenced. Nobody can get into this, you know, holding pond area. And I just stand outside of it with incredible gratitude and high vibration. It, there's a part of you that's afraid to let your energy really, 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 really rise. And nature can do that for people. It can raise their frequency. And we all want to practice really raising our vibration to the highest echelons that we possibly could muster. It's like critical for our evolution. And so, so when these moments occur, like sitting on the morning dew and just staring into these drops of amazing universes, <laughs> that's going to raise your frequency and then learn how to hold it. That will make it more joyful for you on earth. And that was a great question. Thank you. Hi, Marie. It's Susanna from London, UK. I uh, came across your work a little while ago, a few weeks ago, and I've been following you since. Um, the question, I've got two questions, one of which is, uh, what is my purpose in life? And the second one is, um, I tend to um, clam up and not be able to express myself very well whenever I'm in, um, in situations, uh, in gatherings. Um, and I was wondering as to why do I have that kind of anxiety to speak um, in a meetings and uh, in big crowds? Um, I appreciate your advice and everything you do, and I'm very grateful for your work. Thank you. Thank, thank you. I'm only going to answer your second question, I'm pretty sure. And I loved it. So what happens, some people, we all have all these, we all have defense mechanisms. Everyone has defense mechanisms. And, and one of them is when we kind of sneak out of our body. So we sneak out our energy out of our body when we feel there could possibly be confrontation or it feels uncomfortable. And your mind may not have an awareness of it, but your energy system is. It's definitely related to your inner children, your childhood and previous lifetimes where maybe people yelled at you or they were critical, they were unkind. And one of the defense mechanisms is to sneak out of your body and actually experience it from more of an angelic presence, which lightens it a little bit, but doesn't allow you to have a fair and honest conversation with another person. Uh, Barbara Brenham, she calls this energy movement schizoid by the way, in her book, The Hands of Light. Um, so it's your energy moves out. It's one of my secondary defense mechanisms. So it's a popular defense mechanism. Some people move to the side. You actually go through the top of your head. You're, so you take a percentage of your energy when you feel pressure or you feel there could be confrontation or that people might argue. You can smell it. You like sniff it in the air and you go, and you take your energy outside. And you uh, see it from a different vantage point, but it doesn't allow you to connect from the human world and have the conversation that you really need. This is why some people will stay in complicated and difficult relationships for a long time because A, they're, they're not communicating the truth of what they're experiencing to their boss or their partner or whoever the person is. And, and, and so they're not ever in, the, in a really, truly honest relationship because the person thinks that that's that they're talking to uh, or they're, that's difficult, thinks that they're not having difficulty and thinks that everything's fine, <laughs> which it's not. And then the person who's not communicating, whose energy is slip, slipping out of their body and hanging above their head, 
is looking at it from an angelic perception and angels kind of bless everything. And, and that's not really what's happening on earth. People need to learn to speak their truth, express how they feel, set boundaries, walk away from difficult scenarios and situations. So I love this question. I'm sorry it happens to you, but what you need to do is when you start to feel that happening, there's several things to do. When you start to feel that happening, maybe put your hand on your heart chakra and just go to yourself, you know, honey, you're safe here. Home is safe. You're safe here. Home is safe. Say that to yourself so you can bring your energy down. Um, if, if it's like, let's say it's a meeting that you're going to go to a work meeting and, and you're not active in this meeting, I would take some three by five cards and make some notes down. Cause I'm sure you know what you want to talk about once you leave the meeting, but it's over with now and everybody thinks you don't have an opinion or that you would just agree with what was discussed. So you get some three by five cards, you write down your opinions, you go to the next meeting, have your three by five cards and speak from them. That will help you to inch back your energy into your physical form so that you can participate in your own life and let people get to know you and set boundaries and tell people what you really think. This is why some couples break up or family dynamics change because it's a common defense mechanism to escape just for a little bit. It's not a dissociation. It's just an escape for a moment and then a coming back in. Um, eventually, the person who escapes their energy does some internal healing, starts to feel safe, has confidence, feels good about themselves, or just gets freaking tired of not having the life they want. <laughs> And they start speaking their truth to the people in their life and the people in their life think what's wrong with this person? What happened to them? They're crazy. They changed. No, they finally aligned to their authenticity and they expressed themselves authentically. And you're right. You don't know them. They're still getting to know themselves. They're still figuring out who they are. So that was really cool. That was a great question. I liked it. Thank you. Hello, Marie. My name is Robert. I live in South Carolina. And the question I have for you has to do with the fact that I have never really had any clear direction for my life. I feel that I do have certain spiritual giftings, perhaps. I definitely have an inclination to be a light worker of some type, to be involved in healing, potentially, maybe other things as well. And people have told me that I have a lot of insight. So that's a possibility that I'm definitely interested in pursuing. At the same time, I'm also trying to move into a career, perhaps as a novelist, maybe a voice actor as well. And I'm really stuck for lack of direction. I just don't know where to go. I don't know if I have genuine giftings or I just want to think that I do when it comes to uh, spiritual issues and whether I should pursue that. So I was hoping that maybe you would be able to provide a bit of direction here just based on whatever it is you see about me. Thank you very much. Okay, Robert, that's a lot of analyzing and processing. I love everything that you talked about, but why aren't you just doing all three of them? They sound amazing and super fun. And why can't you trust people if they say you have insight and you have healing abilities? Go practice, go do it, go write that book, go do some voiceover, go lay hands on people, just get going. Stop thinking about it, stop analyzing, just go, go, have fun. It's gonna bring you great joy. I'm excited for you. Stop thinking about it, just go do it. Go help people, go write books, go do voiceovers, go do, 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 do. Stop thinking, 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 thinking of all the reasons why you can't do it. Just go do it. Make yourself happy and make the rest of the world happy too. You're lucky you know you have ideas, you have excitement for it. That's 50% of the work, but then you have to put energy into it. When I first started to lay hands on people, I was in the hospital. I think some of you know the story. Um, and, and what made me do it was my nurse supervisor. I went to her telling her, I'm listening to someone's liver. I'm seeing things. <laughs> and she goes, oh, you're seeing energy. You're feeling energy. You need to lay hands on our patients. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? But because she was my supervisor and she said, you need to lay hands on our patients, I did it. It took me three days, but I finally went into a room, closed the door so no one would ask me what I'm doing because I have no idea. I still like to think I don't know what I'm doing. I think as soon as humans think they know things, they're missing out. You want to stay 
curious and aware and present and in interested and, and, and not think you know everything. I'm not saying you do, Robert, by the way. Um, so I laid hands on this person. I'd never taken a class and the only energy healing course I've ever taken, well, that's not completely true, but the one that propelled me into my career was a weekend long Reiki workshop, which I teach. I teach weekend long Reiki workshops because I believe people can get all the attunements in a weekend. And of course the perfect people are attracted to my courses and get what they need. And when I laid my hands on her, I, I saw all the chakras, even though I didn't know what they were, I could hear her body. I could hear music. I cried. She cried. It was a magical experience. Robert, get going. Don't wait. Pretend I'm your supervisor and get going. Okay. Well, thank you everybody for another fun, fast paced podcast, but I have other things to do. So I would stay here longer if I could. Um, have a beautiful day. If you are interested in taking classes for me, um, from me, go to energyintuitive.com. Today is February 21st, 2024. And I'm currently teaching a class that's still open for enrollment on the shift network. And it is about translating your intuition. So feel free to go to my website. All the information is there on the course page. Have a beautiful day.